Ladies and gentlemen, we are getting ready to go live. Just one moment. There's a couple other buttons that I have to press here. And then we'll be ready to rock and roll. This is going to be a great show, ladies and gentlemen. I would make sure to buckle up. It's going to be a bumpy ride. All right, here we go. It's going to be a lot of fun, folks. I don't know if you were here last time when I had the opportunity to speak with Lynn Williams. She is a shamanic healer, and she also does etheric implant removal. She releases and gets rid of negative energy. She also is a teacher, a coach, a guide for her clients. And she was actually visited by extraterrestrials back in 2010. She is going to share that experience with us. And actually, when that happened, it activated a lot of different sensory perceptions that she didn't have access to prior to that. So that has allowed her to do what she does today. Uh, she's worked with over a thousand people to help them get rid of these etheric implants and help over 350 people teach themselves how to become implant free. I'll leave her link in the video description box. It's great to speak with you, Lynn. It's been a while. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Rex. How are you tonight? Oh, fantastic. Living the dream out here in grandma's garage. You know, I got the fan going. So <laughs> loving it. Absolutely loving it. No, it's, it's a nice day. It's been raining out here the past couple of days. So that's a different, you know, it's kind of a different scenery here because it's always so bright and shiny and so hot. But yeah, been great. Really nice. Um, let's get into, for all those that have an opportunity to listen to this podcast, I mean, let's just jump right in. Let's get to the good stuff. Back in 2010, about seven years ago, a little over seven years ago, you had an experience that has changed you forever. And yeah. I had a very bizarre experience that I can remember like when I was just a baby, like I was literally still in the crib and I can remember it almost like it was yesterday. So I definitely believe in the paranormal and extraterrestrials and beings that, hey, maybe they were here first. I don't know. But there's a lot of stuff out there that we're not told about. And I think it's it's neat to get the perspective and here are the experiences that other people have had with ETs or what might be some type of ET phenomenon. So talk to us about that. <laughs> well, you're right. It did change my life. And I just want to clarify one thing, just because I may have some people that know the work I do. I've actually worked with uh, 1500 etherically implanted people, um, but I did not clear all them just to be clear. Cause I'm kind of a stickler for, for those details, but I have taught 350 people how to clear themselves. So just so, so people know the perspective for what we're going to be talking about a little later, I've really talked to and gathered the research and the data from an enormous number of people. So that's going to corroborate what we talk about later, but to get to my ET experience, well, I, I guess I'll back it up and say, when I was a child, I, I came in, I believe I'm a star seed. So what does that mean? Um, that means I came from another realm to volunteer to be here during this time. I was not trapped in the frequency net of earth. So I wasn't being recycled. You know, my soul wasn't being recycled. I actually chose to be here. And I have very visceral memories of that. And so when I was a little girl, things happened to me that I could, um, I didn't know what was happening because I go through the mind wipe. We all go through the mind wipe just like everybody else once we come through. But I had things happen like when I was four years old, I was lying on the grass looking up at the clouds because I could interact with the self beings, which are the cloud elemental beings. And I would watch them change shape. And I remember getting a download that I create my own reality. And I was so excited by that. I ran in the house and told my mom, I'm four years old. I was a very precocious, very verbal child. And I just said, hey, mommy, mommy, I, I create my own reality. And she's like, yeah, 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 go play with your Barbie dolls. Um, and then at eight years old, I remember her asking me, what are you going to be when you grow up? And I said, I'm going to grow up and change the world. And it just tumbled out of my mouth. And I didn't even know what that meant at eight. OK, I've just always known I had a really big something mission or something that I was going to be doing, but I never knew what it was. And then I sort of went to sleep, um, as many children do, because as we tell our parents about some of the paranormal experiences we have, they tell us it's all in our imagination. So as little kids, we start to close ourselves up. And I had a, a few paranormal experiences and my parents again, told me it was all in my imagination. And then they send us to school and they make us all left brain thinkers, right? So where's the logic? Where's the evidence? Well, we know that creativity, 
our access to our spiritual gifts, all of that resides on the right side of the brain. And so that they've tried to put that big divide down the middle. And as we spiritually and consciously awaken, we're merging both hemispheres of the brains again, and this will allow us to access those spiritual gifts. So what happened was when I kind of quote unquote went back to sleep, I lived a very normal life. You know, I grew up, I went to college, I got married, I went into and had a very high level successful corporate career. I was an executive recruiter at the partnership level for several different search firms where I was placing senior level executives. And I lived, I would say, a very normal life and do and doing normal things, right? I went out to restaurants with my friends and, you know, bought a lot of clothes and bought stuff and did all the stuff normal people do until uh, 2010. And at that point, I was uh, 50, 51 years old. And I got invited to go to Agape Spiritual Center in Culver City, California. And that happens to be run by Michael Beckwith. And he um, was in the movie, The Secret, as one of the, the teachers there. African American man. He had dreadlocks at the time. And he's sort of the minister for this church. Now I'm not, I wasn't spiritual. If anything, I was agnostic at the time, but I was starting to believe that my at around age 50, there's a higher power because weird things were happening in my life. But I had never gone to church. My parents were not religious at all. I, I thought I was atheist through my 20s. So I was just starting to believe something is got a bigger hand in everything we're doing. Well, anyway, I get invited through a synchronicity, met this new friend. She says, well, why don't you come to this place? It's, they've got kick-ass music. You're going to love it. And so I went for the music, literally. And they do get a lot of people out of um, the music industry in Hollywood um, come and play music there. And so I'm sitting about four rows back from the stage. Michael Beckworth is now speaking his Sunday sermon. He gets about 3,000 people, two, uh, two sermons on a Sunday. I'm in the early sermon. And I'm sitting amongst this crowd and all of a sudden he looks at me. And when he did, now I didn't know what this was at the time, but my third eye and my crown chakra popped open and started tingling. I didn't even know what a chakra was. I had knew nothing spiritual. I thought spiritual meant born again Christian. <laughs> I truly did not have any concept. You know, I'd been in corporate America. I had my head down being very left brain. So in any event, um, from that, um, I asked my friend what was going on on the way home. She said, hey, he gave you a download. I said, what's a download? The next thing I know I'm doing, I'm taking classes at Agape, trying to figure out what's happening to me. What are chakras and what just happened to me? I'm meeting more and more spiritually open people. One of the gals I met there had a friend in Sao Paulo who said that she visited with ETs down in Sao Paulo. Brazil, that 600 people would go out to this site and the ships would land. Now, I always believed in Sasquatch. I believed in ETs. I'd just never seen any of them, right? So I thought, oh my gosh, I've got to talk to this lady. I want to hear her story. So we started doing three-way Skypes. My friend was in Silver Lake. I was in Marina del Rey, California, and we had this friend down in Sao Paulo. And we started noticing over the Skype line, these weird mechanical sounds would come in. And I'd say, what's that? And the gal down in Sao Paulo would say, oh, that's the ETs. And I'm like, no way. And she said, oh, yeah, yeah, they're talking to us. And I have come to find out, by the way, that they do use technology as a conduit. I've done another talk on, on that with another um, interviewer about how the interface of technology allows these beings to come through even more. And so what would happen is I would go into this light trance. I'd be sitting in my office chair, listening on Skype, and I would start to trance out a little bit. And so they, we'd Skyped a few times. They came over a few times. Each time we'd kind of trance out. And my friend down in Sao Paulo, Lily, would say, oh, yeah, they're back. And she would start actually talking for them. Now, again, I was very skeptical about this, but I was open-minded. I've always been very open-minded. And so um, one night, the three-way Skype had, we had an introductory or, or, uh, offer for three-way Skype and that had expired. One of us didn't want to pay for doing a three-way call anymore. So anyway, long story short, my girlfriend in, in Silver Lake was talking to the one in Sao Paulo and she rings me up on the phone and says, you've got to get on the phone right away. Um, you, our friends are here. And I can hear in the background over her Skype line, these friends are here, right? The sounds are coming over the Skype line. Next thing I know, she says that something is crawling up her back, like a massage roller is going up and down her spine. 
but there's no one in the house with her. Her, her pets are across the room. And I'm again, very skeptical. And I'm thinking, I don't know if I believe these two, maybe this is going too far. So I'm laying on my bed with the earpiece from my phone in the ear, listening to these two over here on Skype. And the next thing I know, she stops and says, oh my gosh, that, that feeling just stopped. And at that point, the feeling was in my chest. And it felt like two little baby hands were squeezing my heart. And I flipped out. And in fact, I couldn't, I was speechless. And I just went, <gasps> took a deep breath. And at that point, the gal in Sao Paulo goes into one of these monotone voices as she's translating for them. And she says, it's okay, Lynn, just relax. They're working on you now. They're going to open up your chakras. And I was like, I know I can feel them in my body. What are they doing? And they moved down to my ovaries and I, and they kind of squeezed those. And then they moved up to my throat and I could feel squeezing in my throat. It didn't hurt. I was wide awake. And then the next thing I know, I felt them go up to my forehead. And at that point I passed out for an hour. So I never saw them in my room. I never even heard them. I just felt them in my body. So I pass out for an hour because I had the clock right by my, my bedside as I'm lying on the bed. I wake up an hour later. I feel like I've been drugged. Like I'm just coming out of anesthesia. And I'm like, I've got the earpiece still in my ear for the phone. And I said to my friends, are, are you there? Are you there? I don't know what happened. I passed out. Well, they all went out as well. And so my girlfriend in, in Silver Lake is she's all groggy too. And she's like, what just happened? I, I, I fell asleep. I don't know what happened. So all three of us were knocked out. The gal down in Sao Paulo is still speaking in that mechanical voice. And she says, it's okay, Lynn. When they work on your pineal and pituitary gland, they have to knock you out. And I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. And I felt so drugged. So I said, look, I got to hang up the phone and go to sleep. I can't keep my eyes open. I don't know what these things did to me, but I'll figure it out tomorrow. I got to go to sleep. Hung up the phone, passed out. An hour later, I hear those mechanical sounds that have been coming over the Skype line. They're now in my bedroom, in the room, like coming out of nowhere, right? And I wake up, sit straight up in bed and like, holy crap. And the only aliens I could remember ever really seeing, because I didn't watch a lot of sci-fi, were the little gray aliens. So I'm figuring I got little gray aliens in my room. Turns out they were not the grays. They're higher level dimensional beings. And I actually think they're my homies. They're where I was before I volunteered here. Um, so they're good, they're good guys. And it was time to wake me up. It was time to have me get on my mission. What did I come here to do? And so anyway, I'm hearing these sounds in my room and I look over in my office to see if it's coming out of my computer my computer sound asleep. So all of a sudden I get, I start getting pulled off the bed. Like something is pulling me off the bed over to sliding glass doors. I had a balcony off my bedroom overlooking the pool area. I lived in a multi-story townhouse overlooking a pool and I, I'm being called to open up the drapes, open up the sliders and go out on the balcony. And I am scared to death, absolutely scared to death. So I walk over to, to the, well, they carry me sort of, I'm sort of floating, I can't explain it. It's like, I'm walking, but they're pulling me at the same time. I get over to the drapes and I'm too chicken. I'm absolutely flipped out. I'm crying by now, scared out of my wits, don't know what I'm about to see. And I run back over to the bed and they pulled me even harder. And the sounds in the room got louder these mechanical sounds. And I pulled off the bed again and I'm over to the sliding glass doors and I know I have to do it. So I just muster my courage. I pull back the drapes, open up the sliders. There's nothing there. So now I'm curious, like, okay, where are they? Where's the ship? Where are the little gray aliens? I go out on my ba balcony, the entire area, it sounds like it's coming out of the sky, are these mechanical sounds. And um, every, all of my neighbors are asleep. It's now midnight. Nobody has their lights on. It's deafening how loud it is. So I think I'm crazy. I'm like, am I having a schizoid break? What the heck is going on? So I run into the house and I call my friend in Silver Lake and I wake her up and I say, just tell me you can hear this. Tell me I'm not crazy. And so I bring the phone out onto the balcony and she's all excited. She's like, oh my God. She said, they're there. She said, can you see a ship? Can you see the aliens? And I said, no, I can't see anything. That's the trippy part. Well, I started to get that wave of sleepiness come back over me again. So I said, I don't know what's happening, but I got to go back to bed. I ended up sleeping to the morning when I woke up, those sounds were still in the air. Okay. They went on till four o'clock that afternoon. I had neighbors down at the pool. 
um, that were sunning themselves. And I'm like leaning over the balcony because they were all my friends. I knew all my neighbors. And I'm like, hey, guys, can you hear all those sounds going on in the air? And they're like, what are you talking about? Hey, Lynn, come on down and have a beer with us at the pool. So I go back inside. I call my friend and I said, I think we're crazy. I can't, my, my neighbors can't hear a thing and I'm hearing them clear as day. So we Skyped with my friend in Sao Paulo that night to try to figure it out. And what she said is, she said, well, of course they can't hear them, Lynn. All of your gifts are open now. You're, you can hear them because you can hear into other realms. That's what they did. They woke you up. It's time for you to get on your mission. And I started crying again, just bawling at tears. And I said, why did you do this to me? I don't want this. And she said, she started laughing. She said, I didn't do this to you, Lynn. You did this to you. This is your higher self. It's time for you to wake up. You just got some help. It's time for you to get on your mission. Well, from that day forward, my life changed. I could hear into the other realms. I could see I had reptilians in my house. I had black helicopters over my house. I, had, I was meeting strange people, talking to me about coming to Mars. I was being invited into groups like Carrie Cassidy at Project Camelot. I mean, it was bizarre. And it was just happening rapid fire, rapid fire, rapid fire. And I got to jump in. Real, I got to jump in real quick. You said that you saw reptilians in your house. What is that like? Well, it was scary the first time it happened, and I didn't see them all the uh, all the way bl bled through. They were semi bled through. So what I saw was, first of all, my animals picked them up. I had two cats, and the cats would see them and uh, go cower under the furniture. Um, so I knew I had something in the house. And then um, I know this sounds bizarre, but I was having so many strange things happening. I was having so much energy in my house, so many different types of beings. I couldn't see them all clearly, but I could feel them. My clairsentience was through the roof. So I kind of made a, a deal with the good guys. Again, I really believe that it was the good guys that woke me up. I still don't know for sure who they are. I, I, I get ships over my house to this day, little plasma ships. They, they pop, you know, all the lights go off when I pop out there in my yard. They're, they're waving at me. They're coming over my house. They're beaming lights at me. In fact, James Gilliland up in East SETI Ranch has video of these little, I call them little plasma ships. And again, I think those are the higher dimensional good guys. But anyway, getting back to the reptilian, um, I had made a pact with, <laughs> I know this sounds crazy, but I'm telling you guys, it, it's true. Um, I had said that the um, to the alarms in my house, I said, if you guys want to come and talk with me, um, because they weren't, they were giving me some telepathic messages, but they were also waking me up in the middle of the night, I would feel things on my bed, and it scared me. So I said, I'll tell you what, if something is in my house, you want to warn me about, would you come through the smoke alarm and just beep? Well, I was starting to get beeping all the time, right? So the day the reptilian came in that I could see, and it was a Draco reptilian, big wing thing. Um, my cats are cowering. The energy has shifted in the house. I can feel it. It's very dark, very om ominous, very scary, actually. And I can feel something's there, but I can't see it yet. And my smoke alarms are going bonk, 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 like warning, warning, warning. And so I'm like, where is it? Where is it? Oh, my gosh, what is it? What is it? And all of a sudden I'm sitting on my bed asking and I look over to my office and I see this looks like Batman, but it was a winged drac the size of the room. A dark shadow came over the entire wall. And then I knew, and I, because I'd done, I'd done a lot of research by that point on reptilians. I'd seen the pictures and I was like, oh crap, what do I do? And that's when I got the downloads from the good guys. And they said, well, first of all, get out of fear. They feed on your fear. Secondly, sage your house, um, bless your water, throw sea salt and, and you know, Himalayan salt everywhere and command them to leave. You are the authority, not them. Step into your power. This was all in a download that came to me. And this is how much of my journey has come, to be honest, Rex, is I didn't know about most of the stuff that happened to me before it ever happened. It's like taking out these implants, teaching people how to do this. This was a download. Now, I know that somewhere in my past, in prior lives, I've known how to do this, and I'm just remembering, but it's my higher self or source downloading this information to me. And so I just did what, what I was told, and sure enough, I was able to clear the energy. Now, let me ask you this as well. When you had contact or when you saw these entities, 
you talked about that reptilian experience. And when you said it looked like Batman, that got me all excited. I was like, wow, Batman, really? Um, it's Batman's cool. I'm a big fan of Batman and the no, Joker. Wait, wait, wait. First of all, let me be clear. Why so serious, I say? No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. But it, he didn't have the mask on like Batman. I just want to be really clear it, because I could only see the shadow of it, but it had great big wings. You know, that's what I want to talk about. It was, it was seven feet high. It filled up the entire room. It went across. Uh, the shoulders were massive. It went across. I don't even know, maybe uh, six, seven feet across the room. And it, I remember it had wings that went up onto the ceiling. Does that make sense? Sure, absolutely. So now you've seen, now James Gillowan, he was one of the first guests that I had with extraterrestrial several, several years ago. His ranch, I heard, has all sorts of just crazy anomalies around there. Real nice guy. I like James. Um, I haven't talked to him since. It'd be neat to get him back on the show and do an update. But so you, you talked a little bit about those plasma craft and that experience that you had. Now, one thing that started to resonate with me is that sound that you were talking about. Um, just so the audience knows that this might correlate a little bit with that story. This was about. Hmm, well, I have, re I have recordings of him. And for the first time ever, I'm willing to play some of what I have recorded. Yeah, that, that would be absolutely incredible. I'd love to hear it because that noise you're talking about, I remember experiencing something like that two, between two and three years ago when I was driving home from work. So yeah, it would have been over two years ago because this is when I was working in a different position. And I was, I was looking up and I saw these like four or five different, they kind of looked like birds, but you could tell that they weren't because they were so far out and they would like dance and then they would morph back into one thing and then they would dance again and then they would, they, they would do these weird patterns and they, they kept going back into one thing and um, into one object. And I was so excited about it. I was trying to get it on tape. I'm like, hey, check this out. This is so freaking awesome. And I get home and I play it back and you couldn't see it because it was so far out there. You could just hear how excited I was getting. But that same night or morning, because it was the next morning, because it was about four o'clock in the morning, I woke up and there was this weird sound that sounded like there was a giant fan over the house. The air conditioning wasn't on, the fan wasn't on, the dishwasher wasn't on, nobody was mowing the lawn outside. You know, everybody was asleep, or at least nobody was outside of their houses. And it was just this weird, was that kind of what you were experiencing? That same well, no, no, mine's different. That I think is a craft. And many people have talked about that. It goes faster or slower, but that exact sound that you just did, I think that you had a craft over your house these were actually the beings that were talking through the Skype line. So in other words, um, somehow, and I think this is partly the reason we have so much technology on the planet now, is it becomes a conduit, a highway, if you will, for these beings to be able to, to come into our domain with different sounds. I, and, and again, it would take me a while. I wasn't prepared prior to the interview. I didn't know we'd be talking about all of this, but I have recordings of reptilians. I have recordings of mantis beings that have come over the Skype line with my clients. And then I'm gonna about to play you um, a few seconds of very similar sounds to what I heard um, that night, okay? And I, uh, again, I talked to a guy up in Canada who is an, uh, an ancient language expert and an extra, uh, uh, extraterrestrial um, language expert, Tobias, I'm trying to think of his last name. But anyway, he said, that my guys were so high level that they sometimes will either use technology or they may even use the grays, which are kind of like automatrons. I mean, they're not real soul beings. So just like the reptilians can use the grays for things uh, that these higher level beings can come through the grays, kind of take them over and come through. So I don't know how this, you know, I don't know that this language is directly from the higher level beings. Does that make sense? They may be using uh, some sort of filter. So when it comes through Skype, it sounds like this, not sure, but I also heard it in my bedroom. This is exactly what I heard. So I'll play a few seconds of it. Okay. Great.
So that's just a taste. I have a, that one's a seven minute recording. Now, what's really interesting about this. That gave me some Jeepers Creepers right there. I could feel the energy on that. And that was like, uh, that was a very dense left field. Like, I don't know the best way to describe it off, off the cuff, dense left field frequency. And I could actually translate that for you, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that want to know what that said, let me translate that for you real quick. Nick, Nick, we come in peace. We come in peace. <laughs> You're hysterical. Well, anyway, uh, that is, you know, uh, another story with this is I have another recording with a slightly different frequency. Now, what here, all joking aside, I was Skyping one night with a, with a uh, crystal child. She's the, um, she's the daughter of a dear friend of mine, and we're Skyping and catching up with each other, and they came over again. This time, though, they were much more intense and frantic sounding, and it turns out she did understand them. I mean, this is a kid she had experiences of by location. She can move energy. She's a really profound child. And so um, she's, she's listening to them and she said, Lynn, I can understand them. So we have actually 29 minutes on that one where she actually uh, dissected um, uh, what they were saying over the, um, she was typing on, on Facebook chat and, and giving me messages of what they were saying as they were talking to her. Pretty trippy, huh? That is trippy. You want to hear a little? You want to hear a little bit of that? Oh yeah, please, as much as you're willing to share with us, absolutely. Okay, now this one you're going to hear her typing probably in the background. So when you hear that tap, 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 that's her typing on the keyboard, trying to keep up with what they're saying. So that's, um, I, we have 29 minutes of that and, um, yeah, it's just, uh, really crazy. And again, I can't, she told me the message that they came over and gave her was that they were our family and that they were always here for us and they were protecting us and watching over us. And, uh, yeah, I mean, pretty crazy. Now, what can you tell us about the mantis? The, well, all right. In terms of how they sound, everything. I mean, just as much detail as you know about that specific being would be great. Well, I'll talk about my recordings. So, so those are now. When I talked to the language expert um, Tobias, he said he thought that those were actually gray beings that the that the <laughs> these higher level beings had taken over, so that they were the go between to get down to us but that the message coming through them was from a higher dimensional being. Now I've been told by three psychics that my family is ninth dimensional, that I come from the ninth dimension before I was here. And that's who they are. And people that have listened to that first recording, I've played that for a number of clients, the whole seven minutes, they say they go into this trance and they feel like they're getting codes. And that's the same way I feel. I don't feel like they're, they're negative beings in any way. So if they are the grays being used, I, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm not an expert in all of that. I mean, there's so much to this massive story we're trying to piece together here on earth. We can't possibly know everything, but I, I am always trying to learn. Now, the, the mantid beings actually found, sound very insectoid to me, almost like if you heard a bunch of locusts or a bunch of uh, grasshoppers rubbing their legs together that kind of a locusty sound, that's what they sound like when they come over the Skype line. And the reptilians, they sound like this gurgly, deep growling, ugh, it just feel, it, it feels nasty in the body. And they yell at me a lot when I'm doing implant, teaching implant removal to my clients because I Skype with everybody overseas. Um, and they, they are, once in a while, will start yelling at me like, and I'm almost getting downloads to it like, no, you must stop you will never be successful. And I'm like, yeah, right. Sure. As we get rid of them. I mean, they're super easy to get rid of. So, um, 
what can I tell you about all of these species? I mean, again, I haven't studied each one the way people that have worked in, um, in secret projects and interface with them in underground dumps or, or in other places. That's not how I work with them. I basically work just to get them out of the energy fields of my clients. So I run into them in terms of them communicating with me, but I can't say I'm an expert on any one of those species. Well, I would rather hear somebody's personal experiences than an expert that studied something from other people's experiences oftentimes, because I think that has more impact. Now, now you've heard these different entities communicate with you when you've done these sessions and you felt these different energies. You've seen some pretty amazing things. What, when was the last experience you had with an entity that you would call off world? Yesterday. Or, yesterday. Talk to us about that. Um, well, my clairvoyance is um, opening up. Well, first of all, I interact with the Sasquatch people all the time, and those are interdimensional beings, so they can pop in in four different ways. Um, they can pop in where they're, well, they can be completely invisible, but they can actually throw material things like a rock at you, but stay invisible. They can bleed through so that they're sort of like wavy energy, like you would see the heat coming off a road, but it would be in the shape of a Sasquatch. Um, they can bleed in so that they look kind of ghost-like. You can see them fully formed, but they look more ghostly. So you can kind of see through them. And then the fourth way is you, they're full on here in the dimension. You can see them. Um, what I saw yesterday was kind of cool because I'd been getting messages that my clairvoyance will be opening more. Now, the thing about our gifts is we don't need to have all of our gift, spiritual gifts open to the same degree all the time. If I'm a medium and I'm supposed to do readings and help people talk to dead people and, and their lost relatives, I need to have my clairvoyance open and I need to have my, my clairaudience open so I can hear the messages from the dead people and I can see them. I don't need that for what I do. So my first gift is clear knowing, clear cognizance. I also am clairsentient, which means I get like the chingles, uh, tingles, chills, goosebumps going up my spine when something is on, on you know, uh, truthful. Um, or I'll, likewise, I'll get nauseous, I'll start to feel really ill. If, for, for example, I shouldn't be watching something or I shouldn't be around someone. This is one of the reasons I ask for pictures of all my clients, because I can read the energy in a picture and I can tell, are you truly, a, you know, somebody that I want to work with? Or are you maybe a troll or a government agent trying to come in and mess with me? So I use that as a protective device. What happened yesterday was so cool is I had um, taken a nap. And when I woke up, I was just sort of lying there. My eyes were sort of relaxed. I'm looking up at the ceiling at this part of my home where there, it's, in, it's in a hallway. There's no light. There's no reflective light, nothing. And I'm watching these wavy bands of white light go across the ceiling. And every time I would kind of zone in on it to try to really look at it, it would disappear. But if I just let my eyes soften, and I just sort of relaxed it. They started like, it was beautiful. It was almost like, um, what do you call those in the nor the Northern lights? You know how they kind of move across the sky. It looked exactly like that, except it was pure white light. And again, I got a very loving feeling like uh, those were very positive, either divas or positive beings in my home. I mean, you, you get good energies then, and you oftentimes will see sources. That's not just negative. That's one thing that, Personally, it drives me crazy when I read comments that people say every extraterrestrial is a demon. There's no such thing as aliens. There's no such thing as interdimensional beings. There's no such thing as extraterrestrials. There's humans and demons and angels and God and the devil. And that's it. Well, you know, again, that's just a that's what's taught in most religion. And um, unless somebody's had their own personal experiences, it can be hard to fathom. Uh, what I would ask you is, where do you think they get all the ideas for movies like Star Wars? You know, like the bar scene with all the, you know, Sasquatches there, right? Um, and all these weird looking characters. Now, they're exaggerations. But, you know, if you look at some of the characters, oh, that's a mantid. Oh, that's a reptilian. And now with some of the movies coming out, they're full on reptilians are in the movies. They're showing you all this stuff. Dracos. Um, they're, they're showing you all this stuff. So, this stuff has always been here. Um, all these different types of beings have always been here. It's just they tried to dumb us down so that we wouldn't see them. It's like in the movie, They Live, that one segment that floats around 
Facebook a lot where the guy puts on the glasses and all of a sudden he can see the billboards, you know, obey, consume, you're a slave. Or he turns and looks at the businessman and he can see he's kind of a transhumanism robot thing. Well, they're letting us know you guys are so close to seeing us. You're so close to seeing what's here, but you don't know how. And that's one of the things I teach in my sessions. I teach every single person how to see them. And they can see them and then they can get them out and then they can use those same gifts to do other things like remote view and astro project more clearly and all of these things. Uh, this is mystery school information and it's available to all of us. We all have these skills. It's just been kept from us. Can I answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm reading through some of the comments and one of the things that I wonder is when people reference the... Uh, the alien phenomenon, the ET possibility as being strictly a tactic for the powers that be or shadow factions to control people with neuro-linguistic programming mechanisms and psychology. Certainly, oftentimes, here's one thing, though, that I do know, absolutely, because I've got friends that have been brainwashed by people that use certain things like ETs and um, alien abduction, time traveling, woo woo stuff. They will use that to manipulate people oftentimes to make them feel special and control people that way. But at also the same time, I feel that there are genuine experiences that people have with the unknown, with extraterrestrials, with paranormal that isn't explained away by having some alphabet agency put somebody under um, hypnosis and then use some type of trigger mechanism to make them, you know, like hypnosis is very pow powerful, ladies and gentlemen, you can manipulate people and you can actually put memories into people's minds and you can regress people and you can make them think things happen that didn't. And also you can use, I mean, you can use different types of scenarios to <sighs> control the outcome of somebody's thoughts. But at the same time, there are genuine real situations that happen out there that people have evidence on. So it's like they use that to dismiss the genuine cases as well. Yes, I think, I, you know, I think the governments are working with these ETs and have been for much longer than we are led to believe. You know, this didn't just start with uh, Hitler or Eisenhower signing a treaty with the ETs. It didn't, as you know, Robert Stanley came on and showed the photographs of the ETs over the White House in the 50s, it was, it, it, these guys, this goes back thousands of years. It goes back to Egyptian, Sumerian times. I mean, that's what, that's what we're seeing. I mean, we've seen um, tablets where they're showing things that look like helicopters. Um, so it, the technologies and the capabilities have been around for thousands of years. Now our government is apparently um, abducting people and using them for various projects, um, maybe in these underground dumps. But, uh, but yes, I think every single day people have experiences with true extraterrestrials. They are not on earth. They are other beings that come from either other universes, other dimensions, and it happens all the time. I interact with them all the time and nobody has hypnotized me. I am not MK Ultra. I am not a MyLab. I'm not uh, satanic ritual abuse. Um, I haven't had any of those traumas in my life. And I experience this stuff every day. Like this picture right here that I'm sharing with you and everybody else, this was sent to me by a leak project listener in Australia. And she has um, experiences often where she'll go outside and she'll see like these orbs in the sky and take a look at this thing right here. I mean, you can, you can see that it looks like uh, clearly some type of metal object, a metal orb. And if you put in comparison the size of it, I can't really tell how big it is. It doesn't look like it's huge, but it's certainly some type of artificial um, object right there. And then I've had guests on the show that live in Queens, right? Or Queens or Brooklyn, Brooklyn. And this guy works as a hairstylist. And during the day, he'll hear voices to go outside. He'll go outside and there will be these like craft that will show up by the skyline of these buildings and the, it'll, it'll morph in all these different, it, different objects, but it's the same thing. It just is morphing and changing shapes and colors and everything. And it'll, it'll stay there for 20 minutes, 30 minutes sometimes. And other people will come out and they'll look at it. And then it'll just disappear. 
Yes. It's like, well, what the heck is it? <laughs> well, that's exactly what I see at, at night. These little plasma ships that come in. In fact, I can call them in. That's why I think they're the, I, I really think they're my homies actually. And they come to visit and I ask them to, because sometimes you can feel like, gosh, is it just us against the bad guys down here? Do we have any help? Um, we keep hearing in the spiritual community, well, they can't intercede that, you know, we're, we're going to have to figure this out on our own. And I think, well, you know, the deck's kind of stacked against us. We've got a lot of <laughs> technologies that we as humans don't fully understand. So when they pop in, it's just sort of reassuring to me. But what they look like is little stars. They look like a star and all of a sudden it'll start moving. And it's a little orb like that. And it may be very faint and it's moving across the sky. It may pop in from out of nowhere and then it's moving across the sky, but it'll do what's called a power up where it gets super duper bright, like 10 times brighter. And then it'll go faint and it might do several of those power drop power ups as it's traveling across the sky. Sometimes they move quickly. Sometimes they move slowly and then it'll just disappear. And like I said, James Gilliland has uh, footage of this below uh, Mount Adams up at East SETI Ranch of this over and over again. And the military craft will come out and chase these things like they're ever gonna catch them. They're interdimensional. They just pop in and out. So yes, um, I haven't seen it in broad daylight the way this person may have be seeing one, but that's becoming more frequent. And if people know where to look on YouTube, there's video after video after video of sightings all around the world now. It's getting pretty profound. The veils are thin, they're coming through. Isn't this exciting? I think so. <laughs> See, when I, when I told you about that experience that I had where I was seeing what looked like birds, but you could tell that they weren't, and they kept going back to one object, I would say they were probably a lot larger than this because they were so far out in the sky that they looked like birds, but you could tell they were way beyond that. They were a lot higher than birds can fly that I know of. And, you know, that sound the next day, now, I don't remember, you know, anything, any strange dreams or anything before I woke up, but it was bizarre because it was like, imagine just an enormous fan, like right above your house that's bigger than your house. That's what, <laughs> that's what it was like. So it, it was pretty cool. But let's talk about these um, etheric wombs that are being implanted into men. Okay. That's bizarre. All right. So, so I told you my awakening story just to kind of give you an idea of how I sort of moved into this paranormal spiritual um, focus in my life. And really for the last seven years, I mean, in the beginning, I literally, um, I, I did some consulting projects on the side. I had my own company at the time that this happened. I wound down my projects because I found myself compelled to study up to 12 hours a day some days to try to figure out what was happening to me. I mean, imagine going from zero to 60, right? Zero being, you don't know a thing about any of this. And now all of a sudden you're kind of dropped on your head and me being very curious, I wanted to know what is happening to me. And once you start going down one rabbit hole, then there's another rabbit hole, as you know, and it's a never ending, right? So I have done an enormous amount of study and that's what led me to the etheric implant removal. And for those who didn't hear my first show, I was actually doing some uh, spiritual and life coaching. Um, that's what I'm pretty much doing today. And, uh, and I had a client come to me and she had quote unquote demons in her head telling her to kill herself. And she was an accountant at a local car dealership. I mean, this was not some crazy lady. And she said, I, I just don't understand what's happening. I don't know how to get rid of it. So I've been looking um, for ways um, to get rid of these things. I ran into somebody who knew how to do this. We had a short lived kind of affiliation. And in that, that's when I was kind of booking all the clients and realizing what their stories were and realizing how prevalent this was. I had a woman call me at, at 4.30 in the morning um, wanting to book another appointment. And uh, I got the download of how to teach her. She had already had one appointment. She got attacked again viciously, she and her dog. And I got a massive download saying, you know, this is what you need to do to free her. So I started teaching at that point. And uh, this was in fall of 2015. And uh, I've been teaching ever since. And so um, in working with over 350 people to teach them how to feel for the, where these implants are in their field, in their body, as well as the field around their body, um, how to see them, and then to use certain tools to get them out. Uh, I was working with a man uh, from Australia, I guess it was a, uh, 
about six, eight months ago. Happily married guy, he just had his second child. And as he's cleaning out what's in his lower abdomen, he says to me, Lynn, um, I know this sounds weird, but I've, I've got a womb. I said, a what? He said, you know, like a uterus. Well, he knew what that was. He had just had his second child. I'm sure he saw his wife's ultrasounds. So he's very familiar with the anatomy. And he said, and there's a fetus in it. And all of a sudden it was like, click, 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 click in my head. Because I too had been part of an alien breeding program. That's a whole nother story. You'll have to have me on another time um, because I really do want to talk about what we're talking about here. Um, and I said, oh my God. This fact factors into what they're doing with the whole transhumanism agenda, this whole cross-gendering agenda. It just it was a massive understanding of what was happening. So since then, I have worked with 45 men um, who about 39 of them have had, 39, 40 have had wombs, have found etheric wombs, and uh, another 35 or so of those have had either a fetus or some sort of entity inside. So the, now why are they doing this, right? I wanted to know, okay, what, what, this needs to make sense. Well, first of all, we have to understand that the etheric, you're in your aura, you've got your physical body, then you've got your etheric body, then you've got your mental, emotional, spiritual out to the causal bodies. And they're sometimes called different things, but essentially just remember you have your etheric body which is right next to your body. You also have your etheric template, which holds the blueprint for your physical body. That's part of your aura. Then you have your mental and your emotional body. These entities reside in the etheric body. It vibrates very much like the fourth dimensional astral plane. So you can get everything from lower level demons. You can get ETs, you can get AI technology, you can get black goo or different types of goo that Harold Kautzfella talks about in his research. Um, you can get AI insects, you can get organic type insects, but they don't look exactly like here. I mean, there's so much that it can be in somebody, okay? Um, and so uh, getting back to men with wombs, why would they wanna do that to a man? Well, they're actually trying to re eradicate the divine feminine. It's a time to bring the divine feminine back on the planet and they don't want it. It's these overly masculine energies that are running this world and destroying it. And it's part of the whole Enki Luciferian, you know, satanic agenda. It's a highly masculinized energy. And when something is overly masculinized, it wants to kill and destroy. Well, you threw in the name Enki there. Talk about that, because a lot of people feel Enki, especially if you read some of the Sumerian tablets that have been translated, he actually appeared more compassionate towards humans than Enlil, his militaristic brother. Well, and I'm not, you know what, again, I have to go by people like Robert Stanley because, you know, that's been his area of expertise. And what Robert is telling you is that it's actually not true, that Enki is insane, and that he's the one who actually has enslaved us. Um, and that if he, if I guess anyone tries to intercede, he'll destroy us in this planet. Again, I don't understand that whole thing. I can't, there's only so much I can be an expert on, right? So here's my little piece of the puzzle. I think what I'd love to see is people start connecting the pieces of the puzzle. Like we all have a, piece, a patchwork piece of the quilt and now we all come together and, oh, okay, well that now weaves into what I'm doing and this weaves into what I'm doing and we start to see the bigger picture because there's just way too much to know out there. So I can't say I, I really understand the whole Enki story, although I've listened to every one of Robert Stanley's and other, you know, John Lash and their videos, and I'm trying to understand it, the whole Sophia Enki story. Um, where it comes down to me, I, I'm boots on the ground here to try to free humanity. And, and one of the ways to free them is to get these interdimensional entities out of their system, because they mess with your emotions, they mess with your thoughts, and they mess with your physical body. They cause illness, I think a lot of the um, mental illnesses that people suffer, narcissism, schizophrenia, uh, bipolar, a lot of this actually is seeded in the etheric realm by these entities. And then also the emotions that, you know, I had one client come to me and he would go into spontaneous fits of rage. Turns out he had a massive reptilian behind him that was pulling his strings, making him go into this rage at the drop of a hat over nothing. And once we got rid of these beings, he got stability back in his life.
because the thoughts were his, the feelings were his, and you know, you get your physical body back. You get it to feel the way it should feel, which is pain free, unless you've done something in the three D to make yourself, you know, to injure yourself on some level. Let me let me jump in real quick if I can, because you're talking about the these implants. And I am thinking of an excellent film that didn't get much, that didn't do very, you know, didn't go very far at all in Hollywood. I don't even know if it made it to the theaters, but it was called Branded and excellent movie. Watch the movie, folks, and you will get an idea of these parasites that latch onto people that you don't see with your physical eyes because they're in a different part of the light spectrum. And maybe even, a, you know, one degree away from this dimension, but they're definitely influencing these people that take these products from these corporations. So where am I going with this? vaccines um the new cell line that is a flavor enhancer that is used as a either bitter blocker or it's actually used to enhance the flavor of foods it is derived from a aborted baby's kidney and it's called the uh the 20 the 230 strain or something i'll, I'll get the strain exactly in a minute but to get a, to really finish it off they are making people cannibals and they don't even realize it so it's like people are a part of this ritual and they're feeding off of this energy level that is just all around them, even without knowing it. So I wonder if they're doing that also to kind of link people to a certain spell or ritual almost. Oh, oh well, sure, sure. And, and, you know, I think the dark side gets immense joy in fooling us. I mean, I, you hear rumors that there's now human embryos in McDonald's hamburgers. And I think they get some sort of sick joy in thinking, oh, you guys are eating each other and you don't even know it. I can't go to all those places. I mean, it's such, I'm a profound empath and I feel the pain of everything around me. And so I have to kind of pick my battles because, um, you know, torture to animals, this kind of cannibalism of children, um, all of this stuff just breaks my heart. It really does. So I kind of stick to my knitting as much as I can in terms of what I talk about. Now, let me talk a little more about these wombs and why this is important. So imagine if they're gonna eradicate the masculine energy on this planet um, by bringing in more of the uh, divine feminine. And that's the time that we're in right now, this age of Aquarius, we're supposed to be bringing in the divine feminine to balance. All of us should have masculine, feminine, balanced energy within us and not have it go to one extreme or the other. Well, the, if you look at the secret of societies, um, you know, Skull and Bones, Bohemian Grove, women are not invited, right? It's a very masculine energy world at the top by these rulers. So they have two choices. They can either defeminize men and make them more androgynous and let them make the hybrid babies. So they would see the blueprint, the etheric blueprint, which controls what we look like down here. The blueprint holds... Um, you know, the, the template for our body, all our cells, tissues, bones, and so on. If they start seeding this blueprint of a fetus and a womb in a man, eventually that may filter down into his physical body, just like they can, these entities can cause disease that wasn't there nor um, within a person and wasn't caused by anything in the 3D by them messing with your blueprint. So um, this would feminize men, make them androgynous and think about the movies. OK, think about the movies where they have Hollywood um, is making all these movies, Jack and Jill with Adam Sandler, Tootsie with Dustin Hoffman, Mrs. Doubtfire, Junior with Arnold Schwarzenegger, where he gets pregnant. Um, or they're cross uh, dressing, you know, um, what women want with Mel Gibbs, uh, Eddie Murphy and Norbert and the Nutty Professor. These men are wearing dresses. They're pregnant. What's going on with that? I remember when these movies started coming out, I thought, why are they doing this? This is such a weird theme. Well, what they're also doing on the feminine side is they're making women very masculine. They're taking away the divine feminine in both of us. And, um, and men will not be able to fight back because they won't be real men anymore. If you look at uh, the spring fashions this year coming out of Paris, they want to dress all young men in dresses. It's bizarre. And so, um, what I think is happening is they're trying to seed their program on the etheric. And if people can, I've told the men that I've worked with, every time you see that, pull it out. Every time you, you see a womb, just pull it out, get rid of it. Because they want them to be able to make their hybrid babies as part of the transhumanism agenda. And then they basically will capture our consciousness. They'll entrap it in 
technology, and then they'll be able to use what's left of us, what's left of our bio suit for whatever they want to create, their, bi their hybrid children. That's my theory. That's what I think is happening here. You know, that's a good theory. And actually, I was going to finish something that made sense a moment ago, but I started losing the train of thought. And it was regards to the vaccines in the film Branded, where in Branded, they link people to these parasitic energies. And I also, I also wonder if they do it with vaccines and certain genetically modified foods and by putting aborted baby cells in foods, if that links a certain energy or entity to you, kind of like you're talking about these etheric wombs. Oh, absolutely. All of that stuff, it opens up highways. Well, okay, so if we look at GMOs or poisoning our food, if we look at vaccines, if we look at chemtrails, um, if we look at 5G networks, um, all of this is going to weaken the human body. When the human, when you're not fully grounded and embodied in your body, that is, your um, in your head, your left brain thinking, watching way too much TV, ungrounded, you're not in nature. Um, you, uh, when you don't get enough sleep, when you're eating crappy food, when you're drinking a lot of alcohol, when you're doing drugs, and that includes ayahuasca and marijuana. People try to convince me, oh, that's nature. No, that isn't. If you're smoking pot every night you're an addict. And whenever you're, you know, the reason that you want to get high, high means you're pulling yourself out of your body. You're pulling your consciousness out of your body. When you're not grounded, guess who has an opportunity to move in? Okay. So this is why people have photographed orbs, but they're mostly disincarnate spirits because orbs are traveling devices for lots of entities. So they can be good guys or they could be bad guys. But if you take pictures of people in bars, when they're drunk, you'll see lots of orbs around them. Those are disincarnate spirits looking for a host. So when you get quote unquote high, high means I've moved my consciousness out of my body. I'm ungrounded. And that means something else can move into my body. So um, basically what we want to be doing to protect ourselves is we want to be trying to say no to all that stuff as much as we can. We want to be making healthier lifestyle choices. Um, we want to be grounded in nature. We want to get enough sleep. Obviously, we want to get rid of our implants. We all need to learn how to do this and cleanse ourselves. We want to step into our power and our sovereignty of knowing who we are. We are God-sourced co-creators. They're, they're parasiting us, not the other way around. And I think with all of the programming that happens on TV, they've got to get us to create for them. And honestly, I think a lot of us uncreated those hurricanes, the last couple of hurricanes. They are using weather modification to create hurricanes. A bunch of us are onto it and we are actually uncreating them. So they're not as bad. So the last couple of ones fizzled out. They didn't Marshmallow Man kicked their ass. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Uh, we made Marshmallow Man on a Leak Project podcast uh, several days ago to offset the hurricane. And unfortunately, we didn't get to it before it nailed the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico, but we did stop it from taking out most of Florida. Also, uh, Jeff Darty helped with that, and I heard some of the Coast to Coast listeners did. Oh, yes, and I know a bunch of people who did because I had friends in Corpus Christi when Harvey came through, and I had friends in Houston and friends in Florida, and um, we worked really hard. In fact, I'm, I'm not going to take credit because I think there were a bunch of us doing it. We moved the Harvey over from Corpus Christi uh, it, it, a little bit as far as we could, um, cause I have a very, I had a very, very dear friend there and a bunch of us women got together. And this is what I want you guys to know. This sounds like woo woo, but it's not, this is how powerful they are. We are. And that's why they have to program us and dumb us down so that we become ineffectual in our own bodies so that they can take our bodies over and use, they need our battery power. They need our life force, our soul. They need us. And so if we don't give that to them by taking all of that back, by stepping back into our power, by making the right choices in our life so that we are not at risk, okay? I mean, I don't have a TV in the house. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I eat really super healthy foods. I make sure I get a lot of sleep at night. I'm in nature, grounded, touching trees and you know, interfacing with nature as much as possible. I try to stay off as, uh, technology as much as possible. They can't get to me as much 
I mean, they still come in. I still have to clean them, but very, very little because I'm standing in my sovereignty and power. And I'm saying, I know what the, your game is. I know what you guys are up to, and I'm not letting you in. And that's the choice all of us need to take, to take right now, Rex. And that's why we're trying to wake people up is because you, if we all took our power back, they're out of business. They're completely out of business and they know it and they're scared to death, which is why they're throwing so much at us right now because we are waking up. We've got the good guys here. Cosmic energies are coming through that are waking us up and they can't dumb us down fast enough and it's scaring them. So now there's threat of nuclear war with you know, North Korea and all of this. They're constantly trying to keep us in fear, distraction, um, focused on things other than the things that we're talking about here about getting back into our bodies and paying attention to our worlds and making those better and then using our gifts to meditate on, let's fizzle out that storm. You know, let's heal our bodies. I mean, Louise Hay did this. She wrote a book about it. You can heal your life. They sent her home to die with stage four cancer. She meditated, used her co-creative abilities, and she healed herself. So we have, all of us have these capabilities, but we've got to decide, are we ready to really start paying attention before this you know, world kind of goes to hell in a handbasket and take our power back? Or are we just going to let us let them lead us into a transhumanism, you know, transgendered environment where we're not even home anymore? That's the choice we have right now. Let's talk about North Korea for a minute and the global stage. The research that I've done, whether it be a book by Mauro Bellino called The Book That Will Forever Change the Way You Think About the Bible, um, whether it be the old Sumerian tablets, whether it be the Greek mythos, the Egyptian mythos, like the Book of the Dead, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, whether I read through the Hindu philosophies, the Bhavakakra, the cycles of destinies and karmas, there's this underlying theme. And I feel from the research that I've done, what I've seen and what I am seeing right now, that whatever it is that is controlling the very top levels of infrastructure and society, the MFers, the money funders, the shadow factions in the shadows, in the shadows. It's like they're, they're so far out of the regular populace that even the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, et cetera, I feel are pawns to this mechanism. And I think that it's either an off-world source that wants to literally usurp up all the energy of this planet and turn it into a anti-biology, um, into a mechanical system that is non-biological or that is encapsulated the non-biological that literally wants to absorb it and assimilate it and, and find a way to completely cover it and blanket it and um, smother it so that it is on the outside, not on the inside, using the biological aspects of reality as its control mechanism, and then just going to the next planet, the next planet, the next planet, almost like a planet killer. And I mean, look at the stratospheric aerosol injections. Look at the, the corporations that make billions of dollars creating these Franken foods and Franken seeds, and then spraying the planet with glyphosate, which is a deadly chemical to biology. Then you find it in all sorts of foods and, and even organic food supply. You'll find it now because it's just about everywhere. So is there like an off-world faction? Give us the scoop. I mean, have you talked to a reptilian or a Darth Vader type entity or something that's told you the plan on why they are controlling the masses the way that they are and why they are destroying the planet as quick as they are. They're using us to destroy the planet right now. Okay, so I think we, we take it back to that whole, um, whether you want to call it Enki, Luciferian, um, satanic agenda, um, you know, going back up to the Sophia story. And then from that, um, if, if Enki and the Anunnaki came from, from that um, and Enki decides to come to this world and or this solar system, because I don't think it's just Earth, um, and enslave it, uh, but particularly Earth, we are the jewel in the solar system. And if you look at pictures of the other planets, I mean, we're the, we're the beautiful blue planet. And we've got human beings on there that, by the way, I think we're not made by Enki or the Anunnaki. I think we were actually here before but I think they came in and they tried to manipulate our DNA uh, to enslave us. So I just have never resonated. I think that we've always been amazing 
um, human angelic creators from way before that time. But we don't know because history only goes back so far in terms of what we know. But that is what my deepest knowing tells me. And so what I believe may have happened is that if it's Anki, Lucifer, uh, Satan, they, they created an AI technology, which is put the net around, around this solar system, particularly around this earth. And what I ha can tell you firsthand is I have a number of clients who have seen, quote unquote, the machine when they go up and do their implant removal. Because what we do when we do implant removal is we have to go back layer by layer by layer. Uh, we have to, because they'll put maybe uh, one layer and then you get that out and then there's another layer behind that and another layer. And we trace it all the way back to the inception point. And a few of my clients have gone all the way up and they bumped up against the machine. And we're talking the big Kahona. And you know, what's really interesting. Um, Hewlett Packard just announced recently that they have developed a super, super, super computer above all computers that is, um, has its own memory. It, it can start to think on its own as above, so below. All right, so what do they, what's it look like this machine? Well, this machine that they've seen looks kind of like this uh, computer and then below that, it replicates, it's almost like an org chart. It replicates other layers below it. So just like in a corporation, you'd have the CEO, and then you might have his board members, and then you have the senior vice presidents and the vice presidents, and then you get down to middle management, lower, lower management, and the workers, right? It's like that. So below this supercomputer are many or are smaller computers. And they're and and at the end of this org chart. They're like a spider hooked into actual humans. So the lower level little mini computers, the AI technology is actually hooked into us. And that's a lot of what my clients are finding. They're finding AI technology, mechanical structures laid over their physical body in these implant removals. So when, they, when some of these people were gifted and they followed it up, 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 up to the inception point, they got to that big com computer. Now, one of my clients, and again, I'm just sharing what, it, what I know, um, what I've learned in these sessions, and maybe this is information that will dovetail for some listener into some other piece of the puzzle, because I certainly don't have all the answers. One of my very, very gifted clients, though, has gone up and said there was a feminine component to that machine, divine feminine energy that was entrapped in the machine. And that makes sense because in listening to Robert Stanley, he talked, I think it was him, somebody I listened to talked about the duality. When we get down to this solar system, everything is in a duality and, the, and that it has male and female energy components to it. So this machine has a divine feminine component to it, but she has had to hide because the machine self-replicated and became overly masculine to the point where it's all about destruction. And it's like if if they uh, if they can't enslave us and use us the way they want to, this AI will destroy us, including itself. That's how destructive it is. And my client has actually gone up and talked to the feminine part, and she has been in hiding, but she has worked with secret codes to try to infect the negative part of this machinery with more positive um, God source divine feminine energy to try to heal it. I know this sounds crazy, but there's so much we don't understand and that it is, um, it is starting to work and that the machine is breaking down. So over time, as people have seen this machine, at first it was very robust and now it's starting to break down. So for those people that can remote view and have had that, or, you know, I call it more like a remote viewing that know how to do the, this kind of traveling, they may have seen the machine too. At first, you couldn't get near it because it would attack you viciously. Um, now you can get more near it. You have to be stealth about it, but they're starting to see that it's kind of breaking down. So what's breaking that down? Is that our consciousness raising and that we're breaking free of its constraints? I don't know, but something positive is happening. And that's part of what I want to leave the audience with. This isn't all bad. We're actually making a difference here. We can destroy hurricanes or at least fizzle them out and make them not so strong. We can carry that same sovereignty and co-creative ability into much bigger things. We can eradicate a lot more than that. We just need to know how to do it. I mean, the other day you were talking about hermetic teachings on what, two videos ago and, and quote unquote magic. Well, what is that? What is that magic? 
What are they doing? They're Mind. Using, exactly. We're using our co-creative abilities to envision our imagination, envisions it. And we have a belief system behind it that we can do it. And I actually don't think we need all these weird tools and sigils and circles and all of that. We don't need any of that. We just need to get in the right framework in our mind and access that those abilities that have been shut down within us and have not been taught to us. But once they're taught to us, it's amazing what we can do. And that's what's scaring the bejesus out of these, the dark ones. They know we're, do, we're starting to do it and we're getting it. Well, the neat thing about these symbols and sigils, especially if you know what they represent and you're able to use your mind uh, into that frequency is they take your mind to a certain place. Like what you're referring to is saying, we don't need these symbols and sigils. You're right. We don't. Um, that is more of a form of just realizing that you can be a co-creator without the need of certain tools. But for many people, especially for thousands, thousands of years, they've used certain tools and certain trinkets and oh it's a step. Um, rituals to get you. them to a certain uh, hypnotic, like a certain state in their mind, a certain vibrational frequency in their mind, a hypnotic state. It's like those are tools that help them get to that point to perform what they need to perform. You know, and that's why I feel if you really want to do something with your mind and you want to create some type of spell or you want to do something where you're like, you know what? I thought about it with my mind and I, and I manifested it. Write down what you want to do, when you're going to do it how you're going to do it, the tools that you're going to use to do it. And that is a formula that you should be able to self-replicate. If you create something with your mind and you can self-replicate it to say that it's magic, remember magic. If you're thinking something, that is a form of magic. So to say, oh man, you're so evil Rex. I'm unsubscribing. You're satanic because you're talking about magic. Well, sir or ma'am, do you think, do you actually breathe? That in itself is a form of magic. So I guess you're satanic because thinking something is co-creating at a vibrational level, which is higher than what we are at in this dense formation right now. But just thinking something is a form of creation. Absolutely. And I, want, I do want to say that, yes, um, you know, I get my clients to a place where they're at a much more advanced ability because once they can clear these entities out, they can use those exact same skills to start to manifest a lot more. OK, they can pull disease out of other people, implants out of their pets. They can see portals in their house and be able to get rid of those. Um, it just starts to open your abilities twofold. One, because you've gotten rid of the interference. So now your abilities can open more. And more importantly, you kind of get, oh, and I didn't know this when I started out, but this teaching becomes a baseline for people to do more uh, remote viewing type type activities. OK, and so they can go out into the cosmos and start seeing things they didn't even know they could do before. But part of it is trusting, trusting our imagination. And they've tried to dumb that down in very profound ways, um, starting when we're children. Like I said earlier, you know, we might have seen ghosts in our room or or dark shadows under the bed. You say to your mom, leave the light on. And she says, oh, don't be silly. That's your imagination. Why did they do that? Why did they do that? They did that because if we can really start trusting that our imagination is not woo woo and we know how to harness it properly, because yes, once, you know, we can use our imagination to just fantasize into something that isn't real, but you can also, um, you can also prime it. So it focuses on what is real. And that's what happens in my sessions. And I don't need to convince anybody they're using their own imagination. They can feel the difference in their body. And furthermore, out of 350 clients, they're seeing the same things in the same places in their bodies over and over again. And I'm not telling them what to see. So that is corroborating evidence that they can't all be making this stuff up because they're seeing the same stuff over and over again. And they don't even know what they're going to see when they begin. So then you take those abilities and that's where some of my clients said, well, hell with this, we can go out and start moving and destroying hurricanes. We need to just put our focus on it and treat it like an implant. Right. And why can't we do that with, um, you know, I do that with my food. Obviously, I know my food is poisoned. I try to buy the most organic, healthy food I can buy. I don't eat meat, dairy, soy, gluten. You know, I try to make the best choices. But let's face it, we don't even know if organic food is really pesticide free. So I basically do a clearing and I pull out any negativity before I eat my food, just like I would pull out an implant. 
So you can start to use this in all these different places. And this is why I am so targeted. This is why on my last video with you, Rex, the trolls came out of the woodwork over like 50 pages to tell me that I'm full of it. And come on, if I was so full of it, why even waste your time on my video, right? Listen to three minutes, turn it off and move on. The fact that I literally had 50 pages of trolls telling me I was full of it said I must be onto something and they don't want this word out. And I know that's true because I've been gang stalked. I've had to deal with a lot of negativity in my life for the work I do. But I also believe that I have some protection around me and I'm meant to be doing this work because it's one of the vital things to wake people up and to get them back in their power. And so I'll keep doing it until I can't do it anymore. Right on. Do you want to take some questions from the audience? Oh, sure. Yeah, okay. You know, one of the questions that somebody asked, several people asked the same question, what's your blood type? You know, okay, I wish I knew. Uh, okay, so check this out. So I'm 58 years old. And uh, when I was a kid, I remember every time you went to the doctor, they took your blood type. And in fact, I remember my doctor telling me at one time what my blood type was. And uh, I didn't read, I, did, I just didn't hold on to it because back then it was like, oh, if you're ever in a car accident and you're bleeding out, you got to tell people what your blood type is, right? Well, I have, um, I'm, I haven't been to a doctor in seven years and I can heal myself and I know I'm in perfect, perfect health. So I haven't needed to go, but I wanted to know what my blood type was when I started hearing about all this RH negative stuff. So I called my doctor. I have how many years of records in his file? 30 years, 40 years of records. So I asked them, I said, what's my blood type? Oh, we can't tell you that. And I said, what do you mean you can't tell me that? I said, I need to know that in case it's an emergency. No, you need to come in and, and we need to take your blood again. And we, that's a special test. And by the way, somebody told me that test costs like $500 out of pocket. And I said, that's utterly ridiculous. Why would you do that? And then I started to wonder, maybe because they know what my blood type is and they don't want to tell me right? Like maybe they don't want to know because more and more star seated light workers are starting to want to know their blood type. That might be part of it. But the other thing that's strange is I said, okay, fine. So I bought one of those. Um, I actually had a friend do it. One of those online kits. I don't fit any of the categories. Now those online kits you can buy for like $14. You basically prick your finger, you drop the blood, uh, drop of blood on the card and it's supposed to fit one of those categories. It didn't fit. I didn't match any of them. So then I called the company and I said, well, you, I, you must have given a faulty card. And, they, and I said, because I don't fit. And the guy, it, he was really interesting. He said, we can't discuss that. We can't discuss what those types of anomalies. And I said, really, why not? We're supposed to fit into these different groups of blood types on the card and we, I don't fit on any of them. And he said, I'm sorry, ma'am, I can't discuss that. But if you'd like, I'll send you another card. So he sent me another card for free and I tested my blood again. And sure enough, it doesn't fit any of the blood types. So I think we have more blood types than they've told us. And I think many of us have off world blood types and I think I'm one of them. You know, it's interesting because there's a lot of commercials out now that say, Hey, you know, for a hundred bucks, you can send in your DNA and they can, and we can tell you exactly where you come from. You might think you're Italian, but you'll probably be Nordic, you know, whatever it's, it's another way for these guys to, and I mean, there's definitely an advantage to know what your DNA is, where, what countries your ancestors come from. That's pretty cool. I appreciate that. I mean, I have family that actually helped develop a specific software program for a certain religion that is a genealogy software. Um, my uncle is absolutely brilliant. And I know everybody's got an uncle that's done something cool. Yes, that's absolutely true. <laughs> but I mean, the, the software that he helped design is a genealogy software. And I was able to, because my grandparents told me about my history, they were able to take me way back. And it's neat to find out where your roots come from. Because it also sometimes, there's been times in my mind, I actually asked my grandparents about this several years ago. I said, do I have Native American blood? Because I just felt that I did. You know, my, my family has never told me anything about it, but I just knew it. And she said, yes, you do. And uh, she told me a little bit about it. And it was like one of those things back in the day, if you had Native American blood and you lived in America, that they tried to kind of keep hush hush, right? Because it was looked down upon um, many 
societies, which I think is ridiculous and I think is terrible because the natives certainly have such an in tune reality with nature and their ancestors that I find it incredible. But it's amazing how people can find things out just knowing in their minds. It's like something tells you something, you know what your gut's telling you about it, even though nobody has ever told you anything about it. And then you confirm it and it helps you realize that the mind is extremely powerful and your intuition is extremely powerful. But see, a lot of people that listen to Leak Project have RH negative blood. One thing that I've noticed is there's an abnormally high percentage of people that listen to this show that have that specific blood type. And somebody said, does she have RH negative blood? But I would think that if you did have RH negative blood, you would definitely know because most people that are born with that blood type um, they're told about it because if you have kids or if you need a blood transfusion, that is a very specific type of blood that if you get another type of blood, it will actually attack your own body. Well, I know I'm not that. So I wanted to know what I was. And apparently I don't fit the card. So I don't know what I am, but I know I'm off world. I mean, I know I volunteered to be here and I actually don't remember lifetimes here on earth before Lemuria. So, um, I know as I was on the, during the Atlantean Lemuria war, I was on the Lemurian side. I've, I've never been Atlantean. And I think that's one of the reasons I'm kind of, you know, stupefied by all this technology. I don't know what to do with it because it's not needed. We are the living technology. That's what we were in Lemuria. Anything we wanted, we wanted to remote view. We wanted to bilocate. We wanted to use our telepathy. We had all those abilities. And we still do buried somewhere in our DNA that's been dumbed down. Um, and that's why you want to raise your consciousness because that allows more of those strands to reopen. And then all of a sudden you just know what, you know, you just know what, you know, no one has to tell you it's the same way I learned how to do implant removal. I've been doing some research and I'm finding that a lot of what I know how to do has bits and pieces have been taught by others. Well, I never read those articles. I never read a gosh darn thing about it. Didn't know the first thing about implant removal. And all of a sudden I got a whole packet one day of instructions. And the next thing you know, I knew how to do it and I knew how to teach people. So we, again, we all have these abilities, but as long as they keep dumbing us down, we'll never reach them. And that's, again, I keep going back to you guys. We need to make a choice. Um, you know, do you really want to try to get into your, your supernatural powers? But if you do, you've got to make some lifestyle ch style choices that you may not really enjoy initially until you're, you know, you're raising your consciousness and then you don't want to go back. I'll never go back to watching TV. In fact, I, I walk into a room right now with these high def TVs and they give me an instant headache and I start to feel nauseous in my body. So I, obviously I've completely detoxed off of that and I don't want to go back into it. And I've traded that world for what was more like the Lemurian world where I see entities positive and bad um, I see ships over my house. I see Sasquatch, you know, I have amazing experiences. I would never go back to my old life ever. Um, so any more questions from the audience they want me to try to, Oh, I got a ton of questions from the audience. Absolutely. They're like, we're ready to ask questions. They're so excited. They're putting all sorts of exclamation points and emojis. Yeah. They're super happy. <laughs> um, do you, how far back do you remember? Like as far as. Can you remember Earth and Mars war? Okay, no, I don't remember Mars and, and that earthly war. I have had my labs tell me that they saw me on Mars and that I was on projects there. Um, now, remember, we're living in a time where there is uh, no past or future. We're all, it's past, present, and future all at the same time. I know that's really hard for our linear minds to get a lot, uh, wrap their minds around, but so I've been told by several of my labs that they, that they have seen me on Mars, like I'm the, on there now, even though it would have been in the past, okay? And that I was some sort of scientist on Mars. I have no memory of that. I have been hypnotically regressed three times. And um, I remember having my Lemurian life very poignantly. Um, I remember very poignantly having a Native American life. Now I'm half Irish, I'm white. Um, as anybody can see in my picture. Um, and I don't really know what's on my mother's side. We think it's French and Portuguese, Portugal, um, but, but that's not been verified. But I've always felt like you, Rex, I'm Native American. So since I probably don't have Native American blood, given who I am in this incarnation, um, I obviously have lived Native American lives in the past and I have uh, poignant memories of that. 
So, but I don't remember the war between Mars and Earth now. Okay. And can you tell us more about in-plant removal, please? That's from Rainey. Thanks for the question. Okay, well, um, so I guess it depends on what the question is. In other words, can I teach it to you guys over, over in, um, the video? No, it's, it tends to be a four hour session on average. Um, my clients go between two and a half hours. My longest client went eight hours. Um, and so I, I basically price the session um, to try to reach as many light workers as I can. I charge $210 and uh, I'm not making a boatload of money off of this. I'm trying to get to the light workers, but I do have to charge something because this is what I do full time. It's not something that I can just do willy nilly over and over a, um, over a YouTube interview like this in a few minutes. If there's a specific question around what implants are, and, and I can answer that for sure. I've even thought about trying to do webinars where I could teach maybe a hundred people all at the same time. And I found that it's a very one by one process. Believe me, I wish I could do that. I'd make obviously more money, I'd reach more people. Um, but the bottom line is it's a very individualized teaching because every person has a different experience and I need to walk them through what experience they're having. So if I had five people in a room, they're all having different experiences. How am I gonna teach them all? How am I gonna be able to respond to them? Because what I do is I, I, I sort of am your guide through the entire thing. So as you're doing it, you're gonna run into a lot of things that you don't know what to do. And I need to guide you depending on where you are. So believe me, I've tried to figure this out. And I even asked my guardians and my higher self, I said, you know, am I reaching enough people? I mean, I've been working at this a little over a year and I've only reached 350 people. You know, is that enough? And they said, oh yeah, it's enough because when you get one person clear, that person's aura, their capabilities is enhanced to such a degree, they're affecting thousands perhaps of people around them. So they said, don't feel like you're not doing enough. Just keep doing what you're doing. Free each person who comes to you one at a time, get them clear and let them go back into their domain and continue to, to free their people because some of them can teach. I have a lot of my clients that have gone on to teach others. And thankfully I've worked all around the world. So I've got them peppered in New Zealand and Australia and South Africa and Europe. And, you know, it's been great. So I just, I'm just doing what I'm guided, but no, I can't teach this over a video. I wish I could. What can you tell us about Lemuria? The, what I remember being, um, and again, I, I, I don't have a, how do I explain this? A lot of it is just visceral, like in, in my cellular DNA memory. What I remember, and, and when I was hypnotically regressed, I could clearly see myself. So I was a shamanic woman. I was dressed in very rudimentary garb. They were, they were um, like what Native American Indians would wear, but I looked more Polynesian, okay? So my skin was darker, uh, my hair was dark, but I didn't look Indian, I looked more Polynesian. And I was doing a ceremony um, in the middle of this village and there were, the whole village was around me, okay? And I was doing a ceremony, I was throwing this white pow powder and I was talking to on high. And I was, I was asking for something to help the village. And then I was fast forwarded through the regression to a future time. And I was laying next to an, an old man. He wasn't super old, but maybe in his fifties. And he had some deathly illness. And again, I was doing um, energy healing over him. I was using certain sigils, um, like language. I was writing it on his chest with, um, with, this special white powder. I sprinkled it all over his chest and I was making these sigils on his chest and he became healed. And when I got through with that regression, this was right after I woke up in 2010, I met a man who did hypnotic reg regression. Um, I said, well, why were they all surrounding me? Because I was thinking every ancient history was patriarchal. Why would they be everybody sitting around looking at me? I was a woman. And he had to tell me, no, because in ancient times, it was mostly matriarchal. And in Lemuria, it was matriarchal. So women were the ones that were looked up to as the profound healers and wisdom keepers. I mean, men helped. You know, they weren't subservient, but we, ha we held a much uh, stronger role in, those, in, in Lemuria. Lemuria was a time, it looks like that movie. What's, what's the movie with the blue beings, with the giant trees? Um, oh, gosh darn it. 
Avatar. Avatar. Thank you. It looks like Avatar. They were showing us what Lemuria looks like with the giant trees and the lush forces. That's what it looked like. It was a beautiful, beautiful place of organic beings and all different types of species. And we didn't need to harm each other. We could live in harmony with each other. There was no need to eat. I think eating flesh, that is a reptilian agenda that's been brought onto this planet. We do not, I don't eat, I don't eat meat. I've survived for years without eating meat. And I know everybody's biochemistry is different and I'm not judging if you feel you need to eat meat, but I'm just saying in ancient times, we did not need to kill things. We just didn't, we got along in harmony. I don't know if that answers your question, but that's some of the things I remember about Lemuria. Okay, sure. And mystery asks, have you ever seen the most high? You mean God? I mean, if that's your definition of the most high. Um, source, creator. Um, I have a vision of it in my mind, but I don't know if it's the vision for everyone. What I have seen for me is it looks like a golden ball of light, like energy. It's, it's consciousness. It's not, I just use ener- a ball of light as a stand-in because it isn't even that. It's just consciousness. But again, the linear mind wants to give it a picture. And that um, when my higher self comes down, I see my higher self as if you ever saw that scene with Jodie Foster where she's on, oh God, I can't, I'm terrible with movies. I haven't seen any in so long, but um, contact. And she goes into her mind, right? She's in this ball and she thinks she's been dropped and she's been gone for a really long time. And she comes back and she did it all in her mind. She traveled just like my clients travel. And, uh, she goes to this beach and then she sees this being, this kind of like amorphous glowing being who then ultimately takes the shape of her father so she can interact with it. That's my higher self. It looks like a glowing ball of light. It's got the outline of a, of a being. But again, that's just a stand in because I can't even conceive of what my highest self below creator really is. And by the way, it's not just me. We all have this. We're all fragments of creator. And then we've then then we fragmented out from there and we fragmented out from there. So we're having a single fragmented incarnation on this planet while we're having simultaneously many other types of incarnate incarnations elsewhere. This is just one piece of us. And that, again, is also really hard to get your head around. Right. Well, I've been thinking recently about the oversoul and about how we can experience this physical body and we can also probably see ourselves in spirit form while we're watching ourselves in this physical body. I was thinking about myself experiencing and reliving maybe a previous scene in the past, watching myself like recommending I make a different decision, kind of like the deja vu experiences that people have sometimes. I wonder if that's a way of yourself kind of whispering in your ear going, hey man, watch out what you do on that next move because you might regret it. You know what I mean? So, I mean, certainly the oversoul and the fragments of self and all connected to the same source, that would explain quantum physics. That would explain quantum entanglement. It's incredible. We live in fascinating times. So let me see if I've got any more questions that I can. Okay, so what is your opinion about the machine, the way uh, about waking the machine, despite its nature being quite fractured at this point. And you can email this person if you want as well. Thank you, hybrid. That's a great question. Um, well, I wake up the machine, yeah, wake it up. Yeah. Don't unplug it. <laughs> if you're in it, then you're going with it. Well, in a way, the, in a way, this, this feminine component is trying to do that, which is really interesting. It's, you know, it's trying to let the machine know it doesn't have to be destructive and it doesn't have to annihilate to the point where it annihilates itself. That's exactly what that energy is trying to do within the machine. Do um, I know my client that goes up and talks to that entity, the female entity is trying to get more information about what we can do as humans down here to help this situation. I actually talked to that client today. And what she said is actually, she thinks that um, it may actually be disintegrating, that whatever is happening between our consciousness 
these um, cosmic waves coming in, um, a lot of people traveling and saying that they're working with entity Luciferian Satan energies to actually convert that. Uh, again, I don't do this work, but other people do that. It's all having an effect and that the machine now is almost like a, um, a negative of itself, like a negative picture and it's losing its strength. And that actually what we're really dealing with now and all we're dealing with are these human entities, hybrid entities here on the planet. That in other words, the structures that were enslaving them are actually disintegrating, but they're still running the show because that's all they know how to do. And that's what I'm saying. If we could wake up as humans, band together and say, we're getting rid of the whole political structure. You know, we're getting rid of this money system that enslaves. You know, we're destroying all these technologies that destroy this planet. We, it's us against them. It's like the movie, The Ants and the Grasshoppers, right? It, whatever it's called, the, it's an ant's life or something. If we all stood up against them, there's nothing, there's not a whole lot higher that's holding them together and pulling those strings. That's what I'm getting. And I, I don't know about you guys, but, you know, since the eclipse, uh, since the 23rd, I'm actually feeling lighter and lighter and freer in my body. I'm feeling better and better and better. And I'm somebody that can tap into the feeling of the mass consciousness. And it's hard to believe because we say, yeah, but there's all these cataclysms all around us. Yes, those are happening in pockets. But I will tell you too, the news is exaggerating a lot of it because I have seen them where they piece together pictures from other catastrophes and tried to tell you, this is what you know the Caribbean islands look like. Some of it's true, some of it is not. I'm not saying that bad stuff isn't happening to Puerto Rico. I'm not saying that bad stuff isn't happening to Houston. I'm just saying they manipulate a lot of it so that it's worst case scenario because it brings your vibration down and it may, puts you in fear that one day that's gonna happen to you, right? It's just a matter of time and we think we're losing, but I don't think we are. I think we're actually gaining. So the more that, again, people can step into their own sovereignty and power and do whatever they need, make whatever changes they need to make in their own life to do that, I think that we're going to take this planet back much faster than, and, and whether that becomes a, a planet split, you know, some people say, well, there's going to be the new earth and then there's going to be the old earth. And those that choose to have that old experience will get to stay and live that out. And the rest of us are going to the new earth. I mean, that's kind of a new age teaching. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but I think we can get it back to whatever reality we're in. We can get it back to a harmonious, organic, loving kind of garden of Eden, the way I think this was always meant to be, but we're the ones that are going to have to, to do this. We're, the, we're we got to do the heavy lifting. So. Jeez. You know, I brought up earlier today, what would happen if the whole system crumbled? What would happen if the entire house of cards fell? And I think that unfortunately, because of the way the world is right now on a global scale, if this country was to collapse politically, financially, it would be ripe pickings for the, um, for the barbarians to come in just like in Rome. You know, I mean, so we certainly need to be careful what we wish for. I feel that this dualistic universe that we live in it's a dualistic universe for a reason. It's like, what side do you choose to take? If one side becomes greater than the other, well, then does that become so powerful that it usurps up itself and becomes nothing? I don't know. But it's like the black and white checkerboard or chess game. You play yes. chess, there's, there's two sides, but it's all on one board. So I guess the key is, while we're here in this dualistic matrix, Let's enjoy it as much as possible. Let's choose our side wisely. And then maybe next time or next level type, if Robert Stanley is correct when he talks about this matrix that we're in being a kind of a virtual reality system where this isn't who we are, this is just a physical shell, which many people have felt that way before. This is a physical shell, but that doesn't mean the next side is necessarily better. I'm thinking of a film that just came out by Robert Redford. I think. And it was, uh, was that right? Robert Redford? I don't know. Well, okay. I, I was, I, okay. So this, this film, this guy comes out and he says, uh, you know, they, they come out with what it's like on the other side. This person proves that there's life after death. So a bunch of people start committing suicide because they're like, Oh, well there's life after death. So let's just do it. 
Well, just because there's life after death, does that mean that the next side's better? Does that mean if you stop your matrix right now and you go to the next side, that that's better? I, I feel bad. I, I literally have empathy for people when I read their comments and they're like, they want out of here. They want out now. Well, why? You're here for a reason. You know, you're, you're, you're put here. You're a gift. People appreciate you. Just about everybody that's here right now on this planet has somebody out there that cares about them. And if they don't think that's true, trust me, there's somebody out there that cares about you. We're here for a reason. So I feel like oftentimes we're always looking for the carrot at the end of the stick. We're forgetting about what we are right now. And we need to remember we're here for a reason and we're something in this physical shell as well. So in my opinion, I think we need to embrace that and, and realize that more. Does that make me a humanist? Does that make me a Satanist? Does that make me an atheist? No, it makes me appreciate being here right now. And I feel that even though this portion of our life, our matrix is a physical form and it may not, it may only be a mortal aspect. It may only be a momentary lapse of reason. It's still important because it's still going to influence us on our future prosperity and future, um, whether we're on this dimension or another dimension. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I actually heard recently, and I don't know if it's true, um, but that if people commit suicide, you know, they're, they're sort of recycled again. I, I, I don't know if that's true. But what I do know is that we have far more influence over this reality than we've been told. And again, we go back to if we can disintegrate hurricanes, that's just a taste of what we can do. And then they've kind of showed us in these movies with, you know, these kids with superpowers, you know, um, some of these, I, again, I can't remember the titles, but where there's like five teenagers and they all have a different superpower. That's us. And they're telling us because they have to tell us they can't, you know, they can do their, their dark rituals, but they have to tell us truthfully what this is all about. So they're telling us it's up to us to decide to step into that. And again, you're not going to be able to step into that if you're glued to your TV every night and you're, you know, looking down at your iPhone every moment. Um, you've got to break away from what they're doing to dumb you down so that you can get in touch with all of this. And then, yes, we can start to co-create realities and manifest things and just have quote unquote miracles happen. I see it every day in my own life and I see it in my clients' lives. So, um, but that doesn't mean we don't have challenges. I, I have challenges like everybody else serious, serious challenges that come into my life. And I try to look at each of them as an opportunity for learning and growth. I really am a glass half full. I want to make, uh, you know, I want to make lemonade out of lemons. So not that I say bring it, I did never say bring it. <laughs> but I, whenever I get a challenge that I'm, you know, scared, or I don't know what to do. I, I just have faith that that fragment of me, that higher self of me, elsewhere will guide me as to how I'm going to maneuver through it. I'm going to learn from it. And I'm actually going to pat myself on the back and say, good girl, you know, you rose to that challenge. You got past that one and now you're a better person. And that's, I think all we can do right now, because none of us know how this is going to end. Anyone who says they do, they're lying to you because nobody does. This is why we've got to live through it because we're going through unprecedented times. There is no book that we can read to, to know how this game ends. We're creating it to some degree ourselves. So just, you know, put your seatbelts on, try to have the best time you can try to, you know, get yourself to the highest power within yourself that you can. And, and I think that's all we can do. And if you would, please, how do people get in contact with you? We're going to close out tonight, folks, if they would be interested in knowing more. Um, a couple of places. I don't have a personal website. I am on uh, the mentor page at risemultiversity.org. And if you go to the mentor page, you'll see Lynn Williams and you'll see my bio there. Um, you can email me at lwilliams2002 at verizon.net. And I am on Facebook. If you look me up, I'm at lynn.williams.129. So I'm number 129 of the Lynn Williams, and that's L-Y-N-N -N Williams. So Lynn, L-Y-N-N dot Williams dot 129. And you can always PM me, private message me there. Um, and I do get back to everybody unless somehow, you know, one slips through, but I will get back to you. Great. And one more question I forgot to ask. This person seems really adamant on it. <laughs> what is your take on coffee? 
Okay, so I drink uh, decaf coffee. All right, so I drink a little bit of coffee every day. That's my one vice. Um, but what I did is I cut it down so it's three quarters decaf, one quarter calf. It, I didn't start that way. I used to drink, you know, five cups of coffee a day in corporate America, and I realized it was just wrecking me. It was blowing out my adrenals. Um, it was getting to the point where it was my crutch. So what I did when I started changing my diet is I started just lessening the caffeine. So then I went to like, you know, make a pot of co coffee. I put four scoops in three of those scoops would be caffeine. One would be decaf. And I kept working it then half and then three quarters decaf. And I'm down to one quarter calf. And, um, I think a little bit of caffeine is great for the mind. It makes me very alert. And I've done, I've read, done a lot of reading and I've, they've corroborated that when you're drinking bucket loads of the stuff, no, you're blowing out your, your adrenals and you're hurting your body. So it, it, I think it's like everything else. It's all about balance. You can have a little bit of caffeine. It's not going to kill you. Just don't rely on that every day in heavy doses to keep you awake. If you have to do that, then you're not getting enough sleep or you're overstressed or you've got to make some other change in your life. So that's my thoughts on caffeine. Right on, right on. I absolutely love coffee. So that is one of my uh, vices, I guess you could say. And caffeine, love it. <laughs> <laughs> love it. But uh, this, this has been just great, Lynn. I really appreciate you coming on the show. It's nice to speak with you. I would like to thank the moderators for keeping the, uh, you know, keeping an eye on the chat room. Looks like most people were very civilized, had a good time. We had a large audience here live. So if you haven't listened to a live show yet, folks, if this is your first time listening to a Leak Project podcast, check out the live shows because the, uh, the comment section, when people are actually listening to the shows, there's some great responses there. It's a lot of fun. It's like first class front row seats. And also if you subscribe to leakproject.com, I've got over 106 pages of podcasts, over 1200 podcasts, downloadable, streamable, ad free, about a hundred exclusive to leakproject.com and also subscribe to youtube.com slash clandestine time Lord. Have a fantastic day. Question everything. Be excellent to each other and be the change you want to see. It's, oh my gosh, that, that feeling just stopped. And at that point, the feeling was in my chest. And it felt like two little baby hands were squeezing my heart. And I flipped out. And in fact, I couldn't, I was speechless. And I just went, <gasps> took a deep breath. And at that point, the gal in Sao Paulo goes into one of these monotone voices as she's translating for them. And she says, it's okay, Lynn, just relax. They're working on you now. They're going to open up your chakras. And I was like, I know I can feel them in my body. What are they doing? And they moved down to my ovaries and I, and they kind of squeezed those. And then they moved up to my throat and I could feel squeezing in my throat. It didn't hurt. I was wide awake. And then the next thing I know, I felt them go up to my forehead. And at that point, I passed out for an hour. So I never saw them in my room. I never even heard them. I just felt them in my body. So I pass out for an hour because I had the clock right by my, my bedside as I'm lying on the bed. I wake up an hour later. I feel like I've been drugged, like I'm just coming out of anesthesia. And I'm like, I've got the earpiece still in my ear for the phone. And I said to my friends, are, are you there? Are you there? I don't know what happened. I passed out. Well, they all went out as well. And so my girlfriend in, in Silver Lake is, she's all groggy too. And she's like, what just happened? I, I, I fell asleep. I don't know what happened. So all three of us were knocked out. The gal down in Sao Paulo is still speaking in that mechanical voice. And she says, it's okay, Lynn. When they work on your pineal and pituitary gland, they have to knock you out. And I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. And I felt so drugged. So I said, look, I got to hang up the phone and go to sleep. I can't keep my eyes open. I don't know what these things did to me, but I'll figure it out tomorrow. I got to go to sleep. Hung up the phone, passed out. An hour later, I hear those mechanical sounds that have been coming over the Skype line. They're now in my bedroom, in the room, like coming out of nowhere, right? And I wake up, sit straight up in bed and like, holy crap. And the only aliens I could remember ever really seeing, because I didn't watch a lot of sci-fi, were the little gray aliens. So I'm figuring I got little gray aliens in my room. Turns out they were not the grays. They're higher level dimensional beings. And I actually think they're my homies. They're where I was before I volunteered here. Um, so they're good. They're good guys. And it was time to wake me up. It was time to have me get on my mission. What did I come here to do? 
And so anyway, I'm hearing the sounds in my room and I look over at And so they, they've tried to put that big divide down the middle. And as we spiritually and consciously awaken, we're merging both hemispheres of the brains again. And this will allow us to access those spiritual gifts. So what happened was when I kind of quote unquote went back to sleep, I lived a very normal life. You know, I grew up, I went to college, I got married, I went into and had a very high level, successful corporate career. I was an executive recruiter at the partnership level for several different search firms where I was placing senior level executives. And I lived, I would say, a very normal life and do and doing normal things, right? I went out to restaurants with my friends and, you know, bought a lot of clothes and bought stuff and did all the stuff normal people do until... Uh, 2010. And at that point, I was uh, 50, 51 years old. And I got invited to go to Agape Spiritual Center in Culver City, California. And that happens to be run by Michael Beckwith. And he um, was in the movie The Secret as one of the the teachers there, African American man, he had dreadlocks at the time. And he's sort of the minister for this church. Now, I'm not, I wasn't spiritual. If anything, I was ag- agnostic at the time, but I was starting to believe at, my, at around age 50, there's a higher power because weird things were happening in my life. But I had never gone to church. My parents were not religious at all. I, I thought I was atheist through my 20s. So I was just starting to believe something has got a bigger hand in everything we're doing. Well, anyway, I get invited through a synchronicity, met this new friend. She says, well, why don't you come to this place? It's, they've got kick-ass music. You're going to love it. And so I went for the music, literally. And they do get a lot of people out of um, the music industry in Hollywood um, come and play music there. And so I'm sitting about four rows back from the stage. Michael Beckworth is now speaking his Sunday sermon. He gets about 3,000 people, two, uh, two sermons on a Sunday. I'm in the early sermon. And I'm sitting amongst this crowd and all of a sudden he looks at me. And when he did, now I didn't know what this was at the time, but my third eye and my crown chakra popped open and started tingling. I didn't even know what a chakra was. I had knew nothing spiritual. I thought spiritual meant born again Christian. (laughs) I truly did not have any concept. You know, I'd been in corporate America. I had my head down being very left brain. So in any event, um, from that, um, I asked my friend what was going on on the way home. She said, hey, he gave you a download. Ladies and gentlemen, we are getting ready to go live. Just one moment. There's a couple other buttons that I have to press here. And then we'll be ready to rock and roll. This is going to be a great show, ladies and gentlemen. I would make sure to buckle up. It's going to be a bumpy ride. All right, here we go. It's going to be a lot of fun, folks. I don't know if you were here last time when I had the opportunity to speak with Lynn Williams. She is a shamanic healer. And she also does etheric implant removal. She releases and gets rid of negative energy. She also is a teacher, a coach, a guide for her clients. And she was actually visited by extraterrestrials back in 2010. She is going to share that experience with us. And actually, when that happened, it activated a lot of different sensory perceptions that she didn't have access to prior to that. So that has allowed her to do what she does today. Uh, She's worked with over a thousand people to help them get rid of these etheric implants and help over 350 people teach themselves how to become implant free. I'll leave her link in the video description box. It's great to speak with you, Lynn. It's been a while. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Rex. How are you tonight? Oh, fantastic. Living the dream out here in grandma's garage. You know, I got the fan going. So <laughs> loving it. Absolutely loving it. No, it's it's a nice day. The, it's been raining out here the past couple of days. So that's a different, you know, it's kind of a different scenery here because it's always so bright and shiny and so hot. But yeah, been great. Really nice. Um, let's get into, for all those that have an opportunity to listen to this podcast. I mean, let's just jump right in. Let's get to the good stuff. Back in 2010, about seven years ago, a little over seven years ago, you had an experience that has changed you forever. And I had a very bizarre experience that I can remember like when I was just a baby, like I was literally still in the crib and I can remember it almost like it was yesterday. So I definitely believe in the paranormal and extraterrestrials and beings that, hey, maybe they were here first. I don't know. But there's a lot of stuff out there that we're not told about. And I think it's 
it's neat to get the perspective and hear the experiences that other people have had with ETs or what might be some type of ET phenomenon. So I said, what's a download? The next thing I know I'm doing, I'm taking classes at Agape, trying to figure out what's happening to me. What are chakras and what just happened to me? I'm meeting more and more spiritually open people. One of the gals I met there had a friend in Sao Paulo who said that she visited with ETs down in Sao Paulo, Brazil, that 600 people would go out to this site and the ships would land. Now, I always believed in Sasquatch. I believed in ETs. I'd just never seen any of them, right? So I thought, oh my gosh, I've got to talk to this lady. I want to hear her story. So we started doing three-way Skypes. My friend was in Silver Lake. I was in Marina del Rey, California, and we had this friend down in Sao Paulo. And we started noticing over the Skype line, these weird mechanical sounds would come in. And I'd say, what's that? And the gal down in Sao Paulo would say, oh, that's the ETs. And I'm like, no way. And she said, oh, yeah, yeah, they're talking to us. And I have come to find out, by the way, that they do use technology as a conduit. I've done another talk on on that with another um, interviewer about how the interface of technology allows these beings to come through even more. And so what would happen is I would go into this light trance. I'd be sitting in my office chair, listening on Skype. And I would start to trance out a little bit. And so they, we Skyped a few times. They came over a few times. Each time we'd kind of trance out. And my friend down in Sao Paulo, Lily, would say, oh, yeah, they're back. And she would start actually talking for them. Now, again, I was very skeptical about this, but I was open-minded. I've always been very open-minded. And so um, one night, the three-way Skype, had we had an introductory or, or, uh, offer for three-way Skype. And that had expired. One of us didn't want to pay for doing a three-way call anymore. So anyway, long story short, my girlfriend in, in Silver Lake was talking to the one in Sao Paulo. And she rings me up on the phone and says, you've got to get on the phone right away. Um, you, our friends are here. And I can hear in the background over her Skype line, these friends are here, right? The sounds are coming over the Skype line. Next thing I know, she says that something is crawling up her back, like a massage roller is going up and down her spine but there's no one in the house with her. her. Her pets are across the room. And I'm, again, very skeptical. And I'm thinking, I don't know if I believe these two. Maybe this is going too far. So I'm laying on my bed with the earpiece from my phone in the ear, listening to these two over here on Skype. And the next thing I know, she stops and says, So talk to us about that. <laughs> well, you're right. It did change my life. And I just want to clarify one thing, just because I may have some people that know the work I do. I've actually worked with uh, 1,500 etherically implanted people, um, but I did not clear all them, just to be clear, because I'm kind of a stickler for, for those details. But I have taught 350 people how to clear themselves. So just so, so people know the perspective for what we're going to be talking about a little later, I've really talked to and gathered the research and the data from an enormous number of people. So that's gonna corroborate what we talk about later. But to get to my ET experience, well, I, I guess I'll back it up and say, when I was a child, I, I came in, I believe I'm a star seed. So what does that mean? Um, that means I came from another realm to volunteer to be here during this time. I was not trapped in the frequency net of earth. So I wasn't being recycled. You know, my soul wasn't being recycled. I actually chose to be here. And I have very visceral memories of that. And so when I was a little girl, things happened to me that I could, um, I didn't know what was happening because I go through the mind wipe. We all go through the mind wipe just like everybody else once we come through. But I had things happen like when I was four years old, I was lying on the grass looking up at the clouds because I could interact with the self beings, which are the cloud elemental beings. And I would watch them change shape. And I remember getting a download that I create my own reality. And I was so excited by that. I ran in the house and told my mom, I'm four years old. I was a very precocious, very verbal child. And I just said, hey, mommy, mommy, I, I create my own reality. And she's like, yeah, 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 go play with your Barbie dolls. Um, and then at eight years old, I remember her asking me, what are you going to be when you grow up? And I said, I'm going to grow up and change the world. And it just tumbled out of my mouth. And I didn't even know what that meant at eight. OK, I've just always known I had a really big something mission or something that I was going to be doing, but I never knew what it was. And then I sort of went to sleep, um, as many children do, because as we tell our parents about some of the paranormal experiences we have, they tell us it's all in our imagination. 
So as little kids, we start to close ourselves up. And I had a, a few paranormal experiences and my parents, again, told me it was all in my imagination. And then they send us to school and they make us all left brain thinkers, right? So where's the logic? Where's the evidence? Well, we know that creativity, our access to our spiritual gifts, all of that resides on the right side of the 